Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at uh, Bisoft 7. I'm currently running Bisoft 7 uh, release 8.8.1.4 and uh, so we'll take a look here. If you were to start up with a part, there's a couple ways you can go about it. Uh, the Bisoft is pretty powerful. Uh, it has SolidWorks, a kind of a light version baked into it. And uh, here's how I would start. So I would go to Designer. We're going to start with a 3D part. Okay, once it opens up, we're going to then, you can right click, if your page doesn't look exactly like mine, you can right click on here, go to your toolbars, and add in the toolbars that you want to see. So the way I like to start is I either start drawing a flat part, and then add bends to it, or I draw a side profile. So we'll just draw a simple little tab here. So I'm gonna to go to my base flange tab. I'm gonna click on a plane, front, okay. And I'll just start drawing here. I'm gonna grab my line tool. Just draw a vertical line up. I'm gonna hit escape. Then I'm gonna draw a vertical line horizontal. Okay, escape, then we'll throw some dimensions on this. Depending on what you're gonna do, sometimes I'll start it different ways. But let's say we want this two inches, and we'll make this one two inches. Okay, then we're gonna give it a thickness. So we're done dimensioning. We're going to go ahead and hit the base flange tab again. It's going to pop up here, so we're going to give it a thickness. We'll just leave it at, uh, we'll call it 074. And we're going to give it a direction. If you're not sure which way to go, I can click on this tab and drag it out to the dimension I want, or I can just type it over here. Uh, let's go inch and a half. So we've got in here a K factor. You have choices if you want to do a bend, bend table, bend allowance, bend deductions, bend calculations. I'll just leave it on K factor since I don't have uh, the settings right in front of me. So I don't know what to do and it won't matter for this uh, when we go to a press break since we're not actually going to be making this part. It's just for a demo. So we're like that. Now I'm going to hit F on my keyboard, fit it in place. Now there is a little bit of a lag here because I am remoting in, so it's uh, not going to be exactly quite as fast. It's, it's definitely a lot faster if I'm uh, sitting at my work computer, that's for sure. Okay, now let's go ahead and add a hole on this. So what we'll do, we're going to click round, click our surface. It's going to rotate in there. Then we're going to go ahead and draw a hole. Okay, you notice how it's blue. Blue is because it's not defined. Once we define it, then we can go ahead and uh, put in. So we'll, we'll do a, uh, let's do a half inch hole. Okay, then we're gonna give it a dimension. So it's still blue. So we'll go from the center of this to here. And let's go ahead and give it uh, one inch. And then we're gonna, now we need to find it left and right. So we said we're an inch and a half off. So we'll go here. And we'll go 0.75. There, now it turned black, telling you that it's fully defined. That means if I modify this part, the hole is gonna stay put. So we're gonna say okay on that. Now I'm going to grab my hole tool. So I'm gonna extrude cut through this part. Okay, you could do a blind hole uh, with sheet metal. I like to, like to just go through all. Say okay on that there. Now we've put a hole in this part. We could also, uh, if I hold down my center, uh, the middle mouse button, I can rotate this part. And I'm gonna use my scroll wheel in and out to zoom. Now what I can do is I can find the chamfer tool right here and you get different types of chamfers you can do 
go through here it turns orange and it shows a preview because I have the full preview turned on If you accidentally click the wrong hole, we can just go to this edge, delete that one out. Try to select it again. Now what I can do here is I can click on these up arrows to modify it. I can go, if I go, I'll show you what happens if I go too far. So now it starts becoming like a, it's no longer a radius. So let's go back to like 0.745. Just less than half. We've got a little bit of gap in there. And I'm going to say OK. There's our finished part. So now if I want to draw this, I can save it any time or not. Uh, I'm going to go now by soft because this is part of by soft. And I'm going to transfer part. It's really simple, fast, and easy. It just flattened out the part. I can give it a part number. If I gave, if I saved it before, it would uh, auto fill in the part number. I'm going to go in here. I can pick my materials I want to use. I can use steel, and now I've got predefined already. So I'm going to pick what steel I want. Uh, I think I said it was 74, so we'll stick with that. Okay, now my part. Now you're just going to go basically from left to right along the top. So my part here, the origin already sets automatically. You can check the scale. Uh, extract is if you got multiple parts. I'm not going to touch that now. That'll be in another video. Uh, start CAD would open it back up into the CAD if I want to go back into the CAD to modify it. So I can go to geometry and uh, I can add waste crushing on here. So if I, for example, I don't want this slug in the way, I can click on waste crushing. I can choose what type of waste crushing I want. I can do zigzag, I can do vertical, and what that's going to do there, I've got a distance of six thousandths, lead in a fifty thousandths, that's basically going to draw a line and split that hole uh, before it cuts. Tools is for bending. I'm not going to touch on the bending right now, we're just going to do the laser cutting. So the bending would, would uh, do all the complete setup, so it goes to my press break. Okay, let's go to the cutting technology. I'm going to select my parameters. It only gives me one option here because it's narrowed down by the machine material. You can give it a priority, which is used in nesting. Uh, rotation allowance, if you want 0, 90. There's drop downs, or you could just type in a number. I'll just leave it at 90. I can uh, same orientation. There's all kinds of choices here I can do here. Come and cut the part. So I'm going to leave it as is. This is typically what we do. Okay, now I'm going to go in here and now I'm going to auto generate. It's done. It's, you've just programmed the entire part. Now, if I want to go modify it, like say this lead in is too long, I usually like to keep it shorter than the, than the part here. It helps with nesting. I can add in micro joints if I want. I can automatic put them in. I can manually put them in. I can change my machining sequence if I want, but just hitting the automatic, it's completely done. Right, now I can go to my uh, machining time if I want to see what that time study is going to be. Based on the machine I selected, which is my 4K, is going to be one second for this part. Uh, I've got in here, I could change to my uh, 6K machine, but, you know, so it's a pretty small part, going to cut really fast. It's thin material, going to cut really fast. So I'll go back here, and I'm going to go back to my, I can look at a simulator if I want to simulate how it runs. You can control the speed of your simulator. You can see that it does a slug destruct, cuts the part, done. And I can come back here and say, you know what, let's add a micro tab on here so it doesn't fall out uh, or micro joints. So I go manual. I've got my selections here already predefined. So I've got uh, endpoint on here. So I'm just going to snap right here. Actually, I don't have endpoint. There, so it snapped right there. Click on that, it drew an X, telling me that's my uh, micro joint point. Okay, now I can go right here, I can create a cutting plan. I can save it if I want, I'm not going to now. 
Um, you may notice that there is a uh, little triangle here telling me here that I've got an open contour. I can show what it is. I don't see anything. It's not showing me. And then down here, machining time, it tells me is off. So it means something is wrong here, and that's why my machining time is off there. Okay, so there was no machining time is what it's telling me. So I've got it there. So now it's back. Go back here. It's a green check now because I've verified the machining time. Not It is not necessary at all to do. Now I'm going to go to create setting plan. Cutting plan, sorry. I always like to use the settings manager. If you want to create templates, you can. I have not set any up. But uh, you can if you want to. Um, I just stick with the settings manager. You can put in the part name, description, any info you want that's all searchable. My material, thickness, machine, cost table I don't have to find. Uh, it'll help you with quoting, but I do not have that to find. I, don't, I use a different program for that. Okay, now it defaults in with the sheet size for the size of the part. So what I like to do is I click in here. I like to click here because if I click here, it puts it like 1.0. But if I click here and tab over, then I could just type. So I'm going to give it a length, 120 by 48. Keep tabbing. I've got default set in here as a quarter inch border around my material. Now I'm going to go nesting. I could add another parts if I want. So if I want, I can click here, add another parts. I can add another sheets. Uh, if I were saving off rim sheets, I can add in residual sheets. I'm going to go nesting though. nested it and you see it's one part but what I realized do I forgot to go over here on tabs or on parts on the tab here go to parts now I'm gonna click above right there I'm gonna type in let's type in a uh, thousand parts now it's nested again we're gonna go automatic nesting okay there's my parts so it nested them all in there. You can look at it. And depending on your complexity, you can go in here, click on the down arrow on the automatic. I can go into my settings. And it defaulted to a protective distance of a quarter inch. So it's a quarter inch per part, including the uh, lead in. So I can change that. I can just change it right here. I can go back and do it, change my default. I'll show you guys that in a different video. Uh, but you got lots of options here on on what you can do on your setup. So go ahead and feel free to play around with those. So we've hit nesting, so it's automatic. So we're done. Cutting technology, basically we've already done it. I can hit automatic machine sequence, but it's already been done. I could add in serial numbers. I could add in skeleton cuts. Uh, my default, the way I like it set up, is to cut the parts the sheet up, so it's going to cut the sheet up into thirds. Makes it a lot easier to remove and separate the parts later. I can go into uh, machining time if I want to find out how long this is going to take. This entire sheet's going to take just over 23 minutes. I can go to my export window. I can export, just hit export. It's going to export right out to uh, wherever you save your files, wherever it's set up. Uh, that you're going to set up over in your administrator. Uh, you could do a manual export and then it will ask you where you want to save the files if it's different. You could also go into your export settings. There's a few little things in here that you can uh, play around with. I've got my cutting wizard, my corner mode, waste crushing is on. Uh, there's all kinds of things you can add there. It tells me where the files are going to go. Also, I've got my machining sequence that gets uh, added to the technology. And it prints my documents. So as soon as I hit export, it prints all my documents to give out to the machine. And again, we can go simulator. And that's going to open this up here. And we can watch it run. 
So right now, first thing it does is it's going to go add in those cutting sequence to separate the sheet up when it's all done. Now it's going to go cut my parts. And I could speed this up as well. Apologize for my voice there. I've got some uh, vocal nodules and uh, it's been a long day, a lot of talking going on. So uh, just try to bear with me. Hey, you could stop this. You can rewind it. You could do infinite. Um, not sure why, but it's there. And uh, that's it. That's basically how you're going to program a part from start to finish. Uh, I hope that helps out and uh, stay tuned for more videos.